The whole point of doing mathematics is to model something in the real world so we can make predictions about the future. The better the model, the better the prediction, and ultimately more, the more someone will pay you to develop that model. So with all this trigonometry, let's look at how it can be used to model uh, some relationships using sine, cosine, and possibly some other functions. The question's going to be, how do we model the real world with trig. And ultimately, we're just going to dive right into some examples where we can see that happen. The first example we've actually already seen on one level. It's the Ferris wheel problem. Let's do a Ferris wheel problem and look at how it can help us answer questions. A Ferris wheel. two feet off the ground with a radius of 40 feet rotates every 12 minutes. How long is a person above 35 feet in one rotation? Well, we've already seen Ferris wheels modeled. Ferris wheel's on a stand, and it's got a wheel. And we can look at the measurement, the fact that it is two feet off the ground, and that the entire height is radius of, radius of 40 feet. So it's not a diameter. The radius is 40 feet. So it's 40 feet to the middle, which then is interesting to note the middle of the Ferris wheel is actually 40 plus 2, 42 feet up. And so we can use this information to decide, OK, the midline of this graph must be up 42 feet. The amplitude of the graph, it increases 40 and decreases 40 as it rotates around the circle. And the period of this graph, we know, is it's going to rotate every 12 minutes. And we. Therefore, from the period, no, the b in our formula is going to be 2 pi divided by 12, or pi over 6. Also, we know when you get on a Ferris wheel, you start at the bottom and you work your way up. The graph that starts at the bottom and works its way up is the negative cosine. Cosine starts at either the top or the bottom, negative from the bottom positive from the top. And so we can put all of this together using what we learned about functions, building functions and transformations of trig functions. We know f of x is equal to the amplitude, which is 40, but it's a negative 40 to account for the negative cosine, of b, which is pi over 6 times theta, because there's no horizontal shift, plus the vertical shift to the midline of 42. Now, this question wants to know, though, how long are we above 35 feet? So what we can do is we can put 35 feet in the answer, because this is building the height of that we are. 35 is equal to negative 40 cosine of pi over 6 theta plus 42. And that's going to give us a function that we can solve to answer the question, how long are we in the air? We'll subtract 42 from both sides, trying to get the cosine alone. And that'll give us negative 7 equals negative 40 cosine of pi over 6 times theta. Divide both sides by the negative 40. And that makes it a positive 7 over 40 equals the cosine of pi over 6 theta. 
So going to our calculator then, making sure I'm in um, radian mode because we use 2 pi for the b. So we need to come down here. It is in radians. Good. And we'll do the cosine inverse of 7 over 40. And we end up with 1.39. So we have 1.39 is equal to the pi over 6 theta. But that's not going to actually be the whole story because 1.39, that's positive over here. We know x should be positive. If we draw a line through the x-axis, because cosine is the x-axis, we should get another angle that has the same x-coordinate. Because remember, you're going to hit this value twice. When you're on the Ferris wheel, you'll go above 35 feet, and then you drop below 35 feet. Those are the two times you're going to hit it. So we know the first angle is 1.39. The second angle is 1.39 down from the horizontal. So to get that, we know it's 2 pi all the way around. And we come back 1.39. So our other option is 2 pi minus 1.39 is equal to the pi over 6 theta. And I can do that 2 pi minus 1.39 to find out that that angle is actually 4 point, let's round it to 89. 4.89 is equal to pi over 6 theta. We want to know what that theta actually is. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of 6 over pi on both sides of both equations, 6 over pi, 6 over pi. And when we do, we find our two answers for theta. Theta could be 2.65 minutes. Or with the 4.89, it comes out to about 9.34 minutes. So to answer the question, how long you're above that 35 feet, we just subtract 9.34 minus 2.65 and we end up with 6.69 minutes, oh, just over 6 and a half minutes, almost 6 and 3 quarter minutes. Out of that 12-minute rotation, you're going to actually be above 35 feet on this Ferris wheel. And that's one way that we can model with trigonometry. But let's take a look at another model that's also interesting. There's lots of places where we can model this type of behavior. We can model um, weigh the tides with the ocean. We can model sunrise and sunsets. We can model temperature. Temperature for the week. Oscillates. That means swings back and forth between 48 degrees and 74 degrees. If the low temperature occurs at 5 AM, when is it? 65 degrees. Well, if we think about the temperature then over the week, it's going to have a low temperature. Actually, we don't really need the midline. It's going to have a low temperature at 5 AM. It'll go up to a high temperature and down to another low temperature at 5 AM. And then it'll go up and down to another one at 5 AM. Which means the temperature was actually dropping for a while coming up to 5 AM. But we know that the high temperature is 74, and the low temperature is 48. If we average those together, 74 plus 48 divided by 2, that should tell us where the midline is. The midline happens at 
61. So 61 is actually the midline of this graph. I don't know that this blue line actually ends right at the midline. It might be above it. We don't know where it starts and ends. Only thing we know is what happens at 5 a.m. So if 61 is the midline, you notice that there's 13 up and 13 down. And so if we put that all together, we know that the midline is at 61 degrees. We know the amplitude now is at 13 degrees. We can figure out the period because a day is 24 hours. So we're going to call our x-axis 0 to 24, and 48 would be two days. So I guess these other 5 a.m. labels are off. But basically, at every 5 a.m., it hits a minimum. So to find our b for our formula, we'll take 2 pi and divide by the 24 hours, which means pi over 12 is going to be the b. We also, this time, have a horizontal shift. Because we don't know where the graph actually starts. All we know is at 5 a.m. So let's shift over 5 and call this a negative cosine. So it's going to shift right 5. And remember, horizontal shifts are backwards, so it's going to be a minus 5. And we're going to use a negative cosine to show that it starts at the bottom and works up from that horizontal shift. So if we put that all together, f of theta is equal to the amplitude, 13, but it's going to be a negative 13 to represent the negative cosine of the b, pi over 12, times theta minus 5. That gives us the horizontal shift, 5 to the right plus 61. This formula now, this function can now tell us the temperature at any given time of day theta. The problem is we have 65 degrees. We have the answer. We need to find the time of day. So we're going to plug that in for the f. So we have 65 equals negative 13 cosine of pi over 12 times theta minus 5 plus 61. And we're going to solve this equation to find out what time we hit that 65 degrees. Solving for cosine, we'll subtract 61 from both sides. That's going to give us 4 equals negative 13 cosine of pi over 12 times theta minus 5. Divide by the negative 13, we get negative 4 over 13 equals the cosine of pi over 12 times theta minus 5. We can do the cosine inverse again, still in radians, because our period came from 2 pi, which is the unit circle. So we'll do a cosine inverse of negative 4 over 13. And that gives us 1.88 is equal to the pi over 12 times theta minus 5. But again, I have to think about my unit circle when I do that cosine inverse. 1.88 is off to the left. There's going to be another x coordinate that's exactly the same down below it. So we know the entire first angle is 1.88. which means the obtuse angle below it is also 1.88. So we could do 2 pi minus 1.88 will take us back to the angle we want. So 2 pi minus 1.88 is also equal to pi over 12 times theta minus 5. And so if I do that on my calculator, 2 pi minus 1.88, we get about 4.40. So 4.4 is the other time, pi over 12 times theta minus 5. 
Scrolling down to get us a little more room then. We're going to solve both of these. Let's solve them one at a time. Starting with the left one, I'm going to multiply by 12 over pi on both sides. And when I do, 1.88 times 12 over pi is 7.18 equals theta minus 5. And adding 5 to both sides is 12.18. So 12.18 hours after midnight, the temperature rises to 65 degrees. But it keeps rising until it's high and comes back down. When does it hit 65 degrees again? Well, we'll multiply the second equation by 12 over pi. And when we do, we'll get 16.81 equals theta minus 5. And adding 5 to both sides gives us 21.81. So 21.81 hours after midnight, we also will hit our 65 degrees. The problem is we don't usually tell time in terms of decimal hours. So uh, with this first angle, 12.81, that's definitely 12 something PM. To get that something, we'll take the 0.18 times the 60 minutes in an hour. And that comes out to approximately 11 minutes. So we'll say at about 12.11 PM, we hit 65 degrees for the first time. The 21.81, that's almost in military time. If we subtract 12 hours off it, we get 9.81. So that tells me it's 9 something PM. To figure out the something, we'll take the 0.81 and multiply it by the 60 minutes. And that's about 49 minutes. At about 9.49 PM, the temperature seems to drop back down to 65 degrees. So we know between 12.11 PM and 9.49 PM, the temperature is above 65 degrees. All right, it's your turn to practice some of these now. We're taking a look at these applications of trigonometry where we can model them to make predictions about other moments in time. Take a look at some homework problems, practice a few of these, and let me know if you have any questions.